This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being. Being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. We come into this life with many lifetimes of baggage. Perhaps it was a contract you created to a person or a church. Or perhaps it was to help release your family lineage of a pattern that has been passed down through the DNA. It can be uncomfortable at times to acknowledge that we have chosen certain paths in life, especially when going through a really difficult time. These choices are often unconscious and blind spots to our logical brain. Many wouldn't knowingly take themselves through a painful and challenging time, but unconsciously, they may have chosen it to learn some sort of lesson and complete the contract for this life. If that lesson is not completed in this life, then they may find themselves back here to complete it in another life. Valeria Tellis interviews Megan Goods, the author of Healing Journeys Through Quantum Realities, The Handbook. Megan Goods helps us to release lifetimes of emotional and physical stress with tapping. She uses a combination of different techniques to create fast and effective shifts. One technique she uses is emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping or EFT. Megan, once a primary school teacher turned holistic therapist, started her journey to help her son overcome his separation anxiety after his birth mother died when he was six. She has empowered many clients of all ages to improve their life, bring back the joy and happiness, and feel a sense of freedom. She has been able to assist clients to come off medication with doctor's assistance by working on the underlying stresses and triggers causing a wide variety of physical and emotional conditions. Meet Megan at mindfulhealingtoolkit.com.au. Here is the interview with Megan Goods. In your own words, who is Megan Goods? Oh, that's a really good question. I have actually been working on myself a lot. Um, I suppose when you are a healer, um, that's what you do. I, I find I'm becoming more of myself and I'm changing quite dramatically, especially over the last year. So who am I? Well, in the physical reality, I'm a mum of two boys. Um, I'm a wife and I've been married twice. So I've learned lots about myself over those over that journey. I was a primary school teacher before I was doing the healing. And I also have slash had my own photography business. But yeah, my absolute passion is to help empower, I'm going to say the world because I have such a big vision, empower the world with their own tools so that they can release their own, you know, physical, emotional, energetic stress. Uh, because I know that you don't have to keep holding on to so much stuff and keep you on in that cycle of, you know, feeling negative and not enjoying life. So my absolute passion is to help others. I heard before somebody saying that all healing is self-healing. Do you agree? All healing is self-healing. Yeah, I would agree with that because for me, I've just let the tools of what to do to be able to release my own stress, which obviously then I teach to others. So okay. it's not about the practitioner. Obviously, I think that there needs to be a connection with the practitioner that you choose, but it, it is all up to you. So basically, once you learn those tools, you can yeah heal yourself or release your own stresses to help yourself to heal. Yeah. And it might begin with the desire, right, Megan, to be healed because that's the the very first step. If we're not open to healing, then it can't happen, even if somebody else is trying to heal us. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's funny you say that because I just had, or I just worked with a client um, recently who has been following me for over a year and has inquired several times about my services, but they haven't come to see me. And now the other day they did and within one session they had this heaviness in their chest that completely left after mm-hmm. a session and they'd had this this you know heavy feeling in their chest for like three or four years wow. so it, it's up to that person when you are ready and sometimes we do get to that point where we've just had enough and we're like there has to be something better in life to be feeling better so yeah you have to choose it and that's another point another thing that I often wonder is why we choose to live with pain. So many of us do that. I have done for so many years without even being conscious of it, but I was kind of used, I got used to pain and I lived with pain. Yeah. So that's kind of hard to understand, isn't it? This idea that we choose to do that. Yeah, I know. See, this is where we can go off on on many tangents. So there's, you know, like I I work with um, past life stuff as well. So, you know, in in a past life, perhaps there has been some sort of karmic um, Mm. curse or something that needs to be released. It could be that you've made some sort of soul contract in this life that you need to overcome a certain pain for a certain reason. Mm. And and you said it perfectly, a lot of it is unconscious. So we all have blind spots, myself included. That's why I also see a healer. So even though as much as we all can have the tools, we still need to have other people around us to help us to see those blind spots that we may have that are stopping us from, you know, releasing the pain or the trauma or whatever it is. We are being guided to see what we cannot see, right? That's what Absolutely. we do. I love that idea too. And um, what is the difference between emotions and feelings, Megan? Is there one? Well, I feel like they're very much interconnected. Yeah. For me, when you say the word feeling, that it, that speaks to my intuition and my knowing. It's yeah. it's about I just know. I don't necessarily have the emotions behind it, mm. but it's like I just know I have to do this to heal, or I I just know that this is my purpose. Whereas the emotions perhaps are the physical things that come out. So you know how you display anger or you know frustration or sadness or grief, etc. Okay, so maybe the emotions they're just labels that we give to feelings. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, definitely. Yeah, the thought pattern. Another question I have for you is about the purpose of life and two questions. One, what do you think is the purpose of the human experience? And second, how do we know when we have found our own unique purpose in life? Mm. I'm going to ask the, uh, answer the first question. Uh, sorry, the second question first. Yeah. Um, yeah. The purpose of life. I can only obviously speak from my own experience. And I was, I had my, my second son and I was, he was only maybe two years old. And I just all of a sudden felt like I was in a rut. And I was like, I, I don't want to go back to teaching but I don't know what it is that I need to do. I'm not sure, you know, perhaps we're going to speak about this a bit later, but briefly um, at that point, my eldest son is technically my stepson, however, energetically, obviously mine, and his, his birth mother passed away. And that actually spurred me on to then find what it was because he then suffered severe separation anxiety. You know, he lived with us you know, 12 days of the fortnight. So I was his predominant mum. And so dropping him off to school was, for lack of a better term, hell. He would be bawling his eyes out. The teachers would be holding him back. He'd be screaming at me because he called me mum. So that actually spurred me on to find something to help him. And when I found that and I started helping him to release it and seeing how it helped him, that's when I knew for me that I'd found my purpose. So I think When you know you found your purpose, it is something that you wake up with that you are just like you want to get out of bed that you want to do all the time. (laughs) Like I'm constantly (laughs) looking for other ways of how to heal other modalities. I just like I love it so much. I enjoy my life so much and I enjoy helping others. So when you have your purpose, I think you know it's a knowing. And so what was the first question? The purpose of life. The human experience, yeah. what do you think that is? 
Yeah, well, I think that's also in connected with in, you know with your purpose, um, which is to find that thing or those things that create joy in your life. Because I think that we're, you know, we're here to enjoy ourselves, to have fun, not to yeah. constantly be in a state of negativity or um, you know in a downward spiral. So, and probably with that as well, there there probably is a purpose of seeing the light and the dark. So there probably is some of that will be, um, you know, having some of that negativity, but then being able to overcome it. Because I do think that, you know, you do need the light and the dark to appreciate. Yeah. So in a way, the integration of both negative and yes. positive or whatever it's happening, like in a way, it's kind of accepting life as a whole and not pieces of life, because we tend yes. to do that. And that's when we have issues. Talk to me for a moment about what grief is and the message. What would you say to someone who is going through the grieving process at this time? So grief, like any emotion, if you suppress it, I'll say enough, then it can come out as a physical condition. So grief is often linked with the lungs. So um, that can perhaps come out in some sort of physical condition. So, yeah, it's obviously really important to release whatever emotions are coming up for you. The grieving process obviously goes through lots of different emotions itself. So you can have like obviously an anger stage, you have like the sadness stage. So it's really important to just be aware of your feelings and to, you know, you have to find what works for you. So, you know, if sitting with that emotion is what works for you and helping that release, which sometimes can actually be really quite quick um, without the resistance, yeah. or it might be, um, as we'll talk a little bit later about tapping, another a technique to help release it. Like any emotion, it is important to uh, however you do it to release it so that you can come on the other side or be on the other side and have moved through that journey to see, you know, where you've come from. And, and then obviously from there, it's, I feel like it gives you just that lighter path. It's like it, it, you're on the other side of it. So you have like this lighter version of you because you've just gone through this pain. Does that make sense? So it's very important to feel the feelings, not to ignore them, escape or numb, try to hide from it. Which yes. we tend to do um, naturally, kind of push away pain. We do that. Yeah, and look, it's understandable. Obviously, right. you, you don't want to be feeling that. But, you know, as, as the saying goes, whatever you resist persists. Mm, and true. that is so very true. It yeah. will keep coming back until you actually work on it or release it, however that is for you. I love that word, release. Yeah. Yeah, it's like makes me want to breathe deeper <laughs> in a way, <laughs> which connects to the breath. Yes. releasing, releasing something that has been holding us back. It could be belief systems. It could be, like you said, karma from lifetimes and so yes. many other baggages we carry. Yeah, I like it as well because it encompasses so many things. When you talk about lifetimes, I found that to be interesting. You wrote this in the article you sent me. It said, we come into this life with many lifetimes of baggage. Unconsciously, we may have chosen to go through a painful and challenge time to learn some sort of lesson and complete the contract for this life. If the lesson is not completed in this life, then they might find themselves back here to complete it in another life. How did you come to this understanding, Megan? Um, this is probably the knowing I was talking about. It's just yeah. something I, I not necessarily have learned. It's just something that I, I feel I know with my intuition. Right. So, right. and also then obviously based on working with clients for a number of years as well, um, I've just noticed patterns and, you know, things like, for instance, as an example, yeah. um, in this life, maybe you are having a challenging physical relationship with someone and that perhaps could be because you've made some sort of contract to the church in a past life. Maybe you were a nun or a priest. And so that's something that you don't consciously necessarily know and is potentially stopping you in this life from being able to be intimate with your partner. So that's just something that, you know, obviously then we explore, okay, well, what could be here? And then we work on releasing those things so that in this life you can be free of those chains and those bounds. Do you call this knowing spirituality coming from the, a spiritual source? Yes, I think it's, it's part of spirituality, definitely. What is to be spiritual from your perspective? 
Uh, I think it's being open-minded, number one, (laughs) I think first and foremost, because if you're not open-minded, then you may not be able to see the different possibilities that you're presented. I think it is also a big part of you. It's trusting you, trusting Mm -hmm. your own awareness to know what you know. Um, I I started when I was, uh, it was actually only a few years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, I started having these really vivid dreams and it was like as if I was sleeping. It was I was in my bedroom and I was in my bed and I was dreaming that I was actually awake in my room and I would see these figures around me and I and then I would actually wake up and I would see these figures and I was like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. And I started to sort of, you know, connect with that and that was sort of where I think my ability started. So, you know, and they've developed and there's, they're all different for everyone. You know, some people are – you know, the visions are clairvoyance. Then you have obviously clairaudience, which is hearing. Um, the knowing is clear cognizance and clear sentience is feeling. So I also have like the empath. People who are empaths are most likely clear sentient because they're feeling things. So often for me, I, I just know, I just have this feeling, like this sense that perhaps there's someone around me. So I think in spirituality, it's it's not just about the psychic stuff. It's about tapping into who you are. It's about not fearing who you are mm. because I think that there can be this stigma. Mm. Uh, and I don't call myself psychic, but I do have visions. I do have information that's placed in my head and yeah. I use that to help my clients heal. So I just see it as obviously a bonus, but I do have to say in the last year, I would say my gifts have increased and I've had different things come along that I've had to navigate. For instance, breathing. I've had a lot of um, struggling with breathing and I figured out that that's a lot because there's there's entities around. And so I'm, you know, sort of working through that. So I think that you're not, you're not in one space through your life. You are, you change and your gifts grow and then you just have to navigate how that is. So it's, Spirituality is about being you, accepting you, using your gifts so that it helps you to propel you forward. And especially when you say not fearing who we are, that is yes. a powerful message, right? Yes, absolutely. So many of us just um, tend to go to the outside and we forget about the inner world. If there's something real, I would say this is the only one, the, the inner world, what's happening yes. here in you, within the body and the mind and everything else in between. It seems like it might come automatically, right? Once we stop fearing, and then that opens the possibility for trust because understanding yeah, leads to trust, leads to love, really. Absolutely. Yeah. With that in mind, let me ask you a fun question. I find this to be fun for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love most about being in a human body? And also, what has been the greatest challenge? What do I love being most about a human body? I'm absolutely yeah. loving your questions. They are just so different to the interviews I've done. It's amazing. Uh-huh. I, well, I love feeling. I'm, I'm such an emotive person. So I actually really love, like I'm, I'm joyous most of the time. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I have my down period. So I think for me, it's I love uh-huh. being able to expand, being able to see where I can take myself. I'm very much, I like to challenge myself. So challenge myself to the next level. Yeah. yeah I think, yeah, about ex- and experiencing different things, you know, experiencing life with others, experience, you know, as much as this period uh, in the world is a little bit tricky to navigate. For me, I've found it to be uh, the most expansive for myself. I've, you know, met uh, some amazing like-minded people more so in the last year than I have in my whole life. Mm, So I think it's the connection as well. I love the connection with people. Um, The most challenging for me, I would say, would be when my son's birth mother passed away. That was very, very challenging to deal with and to, you know, obviously as a parent, you don't want to see your children upset and hurt. So hence why I I do what I do. I I started because I wanted to help him. Speaking of connection, right, that's connecting deeper with people around you and by trying to help them, you ended up helping the world. And also on that, I think you've just kind of sparked something else is the connection and, you know, there are parents out there who might be step parents or they might be uh, parents with, you know, a donor egg, that sort of stuff. It's not necessarily about the blood 
um, and I'm sure there's many people who can get what I'm about to say, it's it's about that connection, that energetic connection or that emotional connection. So even though my eldest son is you know technically my stepson, I don't call him that because he is my son. Like energetically we are mm. together. We obviously made some sort of contracts as well to be together in this life and as well as his mum. She made some sort of contract to leave knowing that he was going to be fine with me. So yeah. wow. that's, yeah, special too. You just kind of um, made me think about last year and all the challenges and the chains. Talk to me about 2020 and what changed for you? What insights have you gained? Yeah, so was to start with, like I said, my abilities have, have increased um, exponentially. So for me, um, it's been about navigating how they work for me and what information I'm receiving so that I'm not the effect of that. And what I mean is, you know, feeling like I can't breathe. Nice. So navigating how that works for me and just kind of making sure I'm still getting insights, but without having the physical, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, uncomfortable uh, state. Right. Also, I've, I would say, you know, as, as you progress in life, I've become more of me than I ever have. And I'm mm-hmm. so much more confident in who I am. I And I'm happy to show up in the world as that. I have been hiding, I realised, I have been hiding who I am, um, you know, with that spiritual side, with, you know, the gifts that I have. And, you know, like even to the point on Facebook, I wouldn't, I talk about my business, but I wouldn't talk about who I am or, you know, the gifts that I have. Whereas now I'm like, whatever, like this is who I am. And if you don't like it, and I don't mean this from an aggressive point, but if you don't like it, then you can leave because I'm confident in who I am. Right. So, right. yeah, for me, the biggest one is actually being more of me, trusting more of who I am and trusting my intuition more. And I wonder why we do that. Is that because society, we live in this very logical, rational oriented world? Is that the reason, Megan? I think that's a big part of it, yes. And I think it's also the other big part is, you know, one of the main reasons why we're here is connection and belonging. Mm. And if you feel like the people around you are not into the same things you're into, then that could be cause for you to kind of stop and block yourself from being who you are. Uh, But, you know, naturally relationships fall away, you know, and you you may gain different friendship groups and everything like that. So it's, it's, it's sad. I know it's sad, but at the same time, it becomes a growth period and it means that you can become more of you and and not have to hide. And it sounds to me like um, a mindset of scarcity, right? To think that be afraid of losing people, losing anything, because life is so abundant. It's, uh, I mean, infinite possibilities, really, when we think about it. So there's no reason to fear losing anything because we never lose, really. It's being replaced or transformed somehow. Yeah, and I really like you've used those words because they have a nice, beautiful, positive spin. It's just I see it as different possibilities. I like that word possibilities. Yeah. Yeah, different pathways as well. So it's, you know, it might be something that you need to work on some of those limiting beliefs perhaps about being afraid of being alone, um, afraid of not belonging or not fitting in, you know, those sorts of things. And when you start to work on those and release those, personally for me, they're they're the things that I have worked on and have really helped to propel me to move forward and to trust who I am and to know who I am and to be confident in that and show up as me. My last warm-up question for you, Megan, is about freedom. What is the meaning of freedom to you? What is to be free from your perspective? I love this word. It is just such a beautiful word. Freedom, uh, I think it just comes back to you as well. So freedom to be you, freedom Mm. to choose what works for you, freedom to trust who you are, freedom to show up as you and not to worry about judgments of other people. And I think it's also about joy and happiness as well. Mm. What, what helps you to feel joy and happiness, I think, is feeling free. So you participated, actually you co-authored the book titled A Mother's Journal. Talk to me about the intention and inspiration for being part of that work. Yeah, so I wanted to get into some writing, um, and I, I know that there'll be some other books that will be coming up um, in the in the future at some stage. Um, but this was a really beautiful opportunity to you know to try my hand at writing and see what came up. And being the fact it was called a mother's journal, I knew that I had to write about my experience as to you know what happened with my son, and also obviously from there my journey of I almost want to say where life began, <laughs> which yeah, obviously yeah. it didn't. <laughs> But it was more the fact that it was, that's when I found my purpose. And for me, when you find your purpose, that's 
really, you know, what your life is about. So it was, yeah, so I just wrote about literally my experience, which I sort of briefly stated before. And I also used that opportunity to then talk about the main technique that I started with called emotional freedom technique. It's also known as tapping or EFT. Um, And that's the technique that I used with my son uh, to help him to release, you know, his stresses and traumas and triggers so that you know, he could go to school and, you know, like now he's, it's four years on, but, you know, he, he now goes to school and he's fine. Like he doesn't have the separation anxiety. He's a lot more confident. He's happier. So I basically wrote about my journey with that and, and obviously the grief that we went through as a family around what happened. There's something about this mystery of life that it's always trying to get us to that point. Like it's almost like working to show us who we are isn't it? In a mysterious way. That's what it feels like. Yeah, it does feel like that. And it, I think it also obviously depends once again on ourselves, what perhaps contracts or limiting beliefs or beliefs yeah. that we have. Yeah. Um, I know for myself, you know, some of my patterns are creating challenges for myself so I can overcome them and in a way prove that I can do this to myself. Right. So right. that's right. actually a big thing I'm working on now because I know that I also don't need to have those challenges right. to, you know, like I can validate myself, you know, with already what I've achieved rather than having challenges. So, right. you know, I think that we're always working on working on things. You know, I, I feel for me, you know, there's different things that come up. It doesn't mean that it might be, you know, something that's really, really stressful or really, really triggering, but it's still something that I look at and go, okay, well, that's actually stopping me from perhaps getting to the next level in my business or, you know, perhaps having a more connected relationship with my family. Okay, what is it that I need to do? So for me, I'm always looking, well, not always looking, I'm just probably aware if something yeah. pops up. So talk to me for a moment a bit more about this idea of choosing. We had that contract that you speak of from a different lifetimes to go through certain challenges to learn certain lessons. Do we always have the freedom or the choice to redo the contract, rewrite everything? Or that doesn't happen completely? We always will have this, uh, let's say, a residue of that destiny that we have created. Yeah, in my opinion, I think that it's something that you can release so that you can stop. So, for instance, if today we were to do a healing together, whatever we've worked on is um, stopping everything from the past and moving today forward. And the thing I like about, you know, energy and spiritual healing is that it can actually also then have an on flow effect with your Mm -hmm. family and those around you as well. So for me personally, I've noticed that, when I've healed a certain aspect of myself, I notice the change in my parents and I also notice the change in my children and even my husband at times, he may react differently to certain things. So I feel that you can always choose to move on. But the best thing about it is that even if the people around you are not necessarily into the things you're into, for instance, if they're not into spirituality, for instance, that even if you were to start to heal some of that part of yourself, it actually can help those around you. And what's really interesting is I would probably ask, you know, a challenge the listeners to to start to do that and really become aware of the changes that are happening in their household or with people around them. Because mm. It really is amazing the things that I've worked on myself and then all of a sudden, you know, like my children are completely different. They've, they're not, you know, they haven't got that little um, niggly feeling. So it's it's actually really amazing to see. That proves that there's no separation, right, Megan? Everything is connected, is um, no separation, really. Life, I mean, it's not even connected. It's just not separated. I cannot even use the word connected because that implies separation. So... It's one, like a lot of people say in a cliche way. Well, there's also looking at energy. We're all energy and energy is all, as you said, not separated. So, and and this is where a lot of people don't recognize or realize that, you know, we're all pretty much empaths to different degrees. And some obviously have a lot more of the feeling than others, but it's roughly, science says roughly 95% of what we feel is actually not our own. Mm-hmm. So for me, that was like a, such a profound thing when I when I read that because when I have clients come in, you know, every single person that comes in has either depression or anxiety of some degree. If if they're coming in and ninety five percent of what they're feeling is not theirs, then to me, I look at it and go, well, then perhaps this depression is not yours. 
So it's somebody else's and you're feeling somebody else's. Mm. So what we're doing is releasing whatever is obviously causing them to feel that way and then also helping them to become aware of who else's energy are they taking on and then how to release that as well. Talk to me about the EFT, the tapping technique for emotional pain, grief, physical pain, and also helps with um, going off medication. So that's interesting. It can help in every, every level, or are there some areas that's more challenging to help with this Technique. Well, there's obviously, yeah, there's, it's varying degrees for different people. Obviously, it depends on the sort of trauma and triggers they have. So right. there's still deeper levels that they may need to work on. But yes, the short answer is yes, it works for all levels. So it's a basically about, there's two versions, of, I say two versions of it. So the, the, the first version is that when I teach this to my clients, they are tapping on what we call the surface level things. So the day-to-day things. So, you know, maybe... Their, their boss at work hasn't been nice to them or their children have been driving them nuts, those sorts of things. So whatever pops up in your world or you can't sleep or you have mm-hmm. a sore leg, all those things that are popping up for you, you can tap on, which is the surface level. And then when they come with me, I find what the underlying beliefs are, which are potentially causing that physical or emotional condition. I, I see us as working as a team. So my clients will work on the surface level, what the day-to-day things, and then I find the underlying root mm. causes to tap on. So right. when you have a very, quite a significant trauma, we also need to obviously tap on the, you know, the trauma that occurred, but also find underneath that uh, why it's continuing. So it might be, you know, a fear of abandonment or being lonely or, you know, something else. Yes, it is. It's been um, scientifically proven to reduce anxiety by up to 24% in one hour of tapping. So it's, I, I cannot stress it enough. It is just the most phenomenal thing that I've ever come across just to see, you know, my clients all of a sudden. And, and the thing yeah. I love about the most <laughs> is that when my clients come in and they haven't heard of it or they haven't done it and, you know, maybe in five minutes we've re- reduced, you know, from a, we do a rating, which we'll go through in a minute. So they might have had an eight out of 10 for their emotional distress and it goes down to a two within a few minutes. Wow. And th- my favourite part is the look on their face is absolutely mm-hmm. priceless because <laughs> they've lived with that pain for so long and they, yeah. it just becomes the norm and they right. don't realise that I don't have to feel this way. And so when they right. start to release it, they're like, the freedom, there's that word. Mm. Like there's this freedom in them and they're like, oh my goodness, you mean I don't have to feel like crap anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That they were used to it. That fascinates me. I love that the word freedom, it's part of this technique. So EFT. How did you discover this, Megan? Yeah. So when my son, you know, was obviously really upset and, and having some anxiety with what he experienced, I was just looking for something. I was like, okay, what what is it? Um, In my own personal experience from teaching, I'd seen psychologists and counsellors and I didn't feel like I had any relief at all. I just felt like I was talking through my trauma, but nothing was releasing it. So for me, I was like, I don't want to put my son through that because I, in my personal opinion, I didn't feel like it was going to work. So I was just looking, searching for different, you know, natural therapy techniques and this came up and uh, there happened to be a course was maybe an hour drive from where I was. So I was like, yep, I'm going to do this. And, you know, we talk about connections. I actually met a number of amazing, beautiful ladies who are still in my life um, who are obviously meant to be from that course. And yeah, and that spurred me on for then, you know, I've learned probably 10 other different techniques or modalities since then. So that was my, my turning point. Yeah, that sounds like fun to me. This it is fun, <laughs> right? Discovering and rediscovering and uncovering all these things. Let's do it. I have a few more questions for you. Before we do that, uh, go through the the tapping technique. I have these final questions. And would you like to add anything, Megan? Say anything? Add anything about the book that you wrote, and also anything else about EFT that we didn't talk about? Yeah, I think just just have a go, just try it because you've literally got nothing to lose. All you're doing is tapping on pressure points um, in the moment. So, you know, just try it and see how it goes for you. And uh, the easiest way to do it is literally however you're feeling at that time is just to tap and talk. We talk Mm -hmm. about, so it might be, uh, let's say you're having a stressful day because your boss is being rude to you. So you literally would just talk about how you're feeling. So 
and we'll go through this tapping on points. Um, you know, I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling sad. My, uh, my boss is being mean to me. I don't feel appreciated. Whatever happens to come up. So just mm. literally just try it because you've got literally got nothing to lose. It might actually make you feel better. So let's try that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Beautiful. So um, what we do is we start on the side of the hand. So we're talking about on the side of the hand where your little finger is. Yeah, yeah. And that's for the karate chop point. So we literally start tapping on that, um, the side of that. Does it matter left, right? No, it doesn't. But before we do that, actually, um, I'll just uh, give you the rundown as well. So I might actually get you, Valeria, to think of a time. So what we do is a rating. So 10 is the worst and one's not so much. So I might get you to, and you don't have to say what it is, you can keep it in your head, but maybe just think about a time that's not too stressful. I don't want you to be triggered. So maybe it's something that's below a five or a six and just have a think about a time when maybe you were stressed or angry or sad. And just let me know when you've got that. Mm. Because of all the uh, practices that I engage in, spirituality and all this, nothing comes to mind. Not that I try to erase everything, but it's, it just doesn't come. And I'm wondering even why it doesn't come up. Because I've had a lot of traumas and I lived 37 years pretty much with those traumas. And it was not a nice time. For some reason, I don't go back to them anymore. Well, I might not be the perfect person for this, but... What would you do in this case? Because I don't feel like I have anything that needs to be released. So I, I would probably ask you, do you feel safe to be in your body? Yes, yes. Because I feel there is something when we, and look, you may have worked on some of these things, which is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, often I find that people who come to me, they'll say, yep, I've worked on it. It's done. But every single time when we've actually delved into it, there has been some emotional charge. Uh-huh. So that's okay. We can pretend, but I would, um, I would be looking at, because sometimes when we obviously don't go back to those spots, yeah. It's because our unconscious mind is trying to keep us safe and not mm, go back there. Right, so, right. And then we don't feel safe to be in our body, which means we don't feel, you know, like our, our spirit can actually, for instance, if someone's had, you know, a really horrific trauma, they can actually, it's like their spirit goes out of their body and stays out because it's safer to be out there mm-hmm. because then their physical body is not necessarily feeling what's going on to them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just, just, you know, an idea, but that's okay. Let's, right. let's pretend. Okay. So yes. let's pretend that you have something that you were angry about. So I would ask, okay, what emotions are, are coming up? So you might say anger. Um, and then on a scale of one to 10, if 10 the worst, so let's say it might be a six. And then I would also ask you, whereabouts do you feel it in your body? So it's important to know that as well. And let's just say stomach. Okay. So now we've got our rating. And the reason we do that is because for those beautiful, logical minded people, this helps you to start looking into, okay, this is actually working because then you have a physical thing that you can actually measure it by. Yeah. So then we start on the side of a hand. So yes, it doesn't matter if it's the left or the right. Um, it's on the side of the hand underneath where this little finger is. So we'll start tapping on the side of the hand and we do what's called a setup statement. So three times we'll say this statement. So what I'm going to get you to do is to start tapping on the side of your hand. Yes, I'm doing that. And I'll get you to repeat what I'm saying as well out loud, okay? Yeah. So even though I have this anger. Even though I have this anger. In my stomach. In my stomach. I can accept myself as much as I can. I can accept myself as much as I can. Even though I have this anger in my stomach. Even though I have this anger in my stomach. I can accept myself as much as I can. I can accept myself as much as I can. Even though I have this anger in my stomach. Even though I have this anger in my stomach. I can accept myself as much as I can. I can accept myself as much as I can. Okay, so now we go to the top of the head. So in the middle of the top of the head, we start tapping. And I'll get you to say, feeling angry. Feeling angry. And then we go to our eyebrows and we go to the inner eyebrow. I have to take my my glasses out. (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) So we go to the inner eyebrow. Yes. And we might say, angry in my stomach. Feeling angry in my stomach. Then we go to the side of the eye. Yeah, on the side. Okay. Yes, we go to the the side of the eye. We might say, angry in my stomach. Angry in my stomach. And then we go underneath the eye. So, you know, relatively close to the underneath the eye. Yeah. All this anger. All this anger. And then underneath the nose, feeling angry. 
feeling angry. And then we go underneath the mouth, so sort of where um, the chin is, in between the chin and the mouth. Yeah, yeah. All this anger. All this anger. Okay, we've got two more points. So the next point is on the collarbone, so just yeah. sort of underneath where the neck is. Yeah. Feeling angry. Feeling angry. And the last point is under the arm. It's about a hand width down on the side underneath the arm. Yes, yeah. Feeling feeling angry. Feeling angry. Okay, and then we would keep going. So we do maybe three or four rounds and then what we would do is re-rate it. So then we'd say, okay, so we'll take a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then we would check in again. So we might go back to that event and go, okay, um, all right, so have you still got anger there? And they might say, no, it's changed to sadness, or it could be, yes, there's still anger. And then it might say, okay, what's the rating now? Now with the rating, it's also important to note that it can go up before it goes down. And if that happens, that's all natural and normal. And it's just because uh, you may be more connected with the emotion at that time. So so it might've been a six, you might say, oh, it's actually gone down to a three now. Okay, and then we check as well where it is in the body. It could have moved from the stomach or it could still be in the same spot. So we literally just follow what the body does. So if we are still uh, below, a, uh, sorry, above a one, yeah. then we need to keep tapping. And obviously I've just done, done something, you know, very general. It would be how you feel. So, you know, you might go into more detail about why you're feeling angry, what happened to make you feel angry, yeah. those sorts of things as well. But the easiest way is literally just tapping on all those points and just saying, um, you know, feeling angry because, you know, my boss is being rude to me, I'm not feeling appreciated, and just tapping through all those points. Yeah. I love this idea of using the body as a reference because the body can't lie. It's always very honest, <laughs> right? It's always Absolutely. Yeah, will let us know what's happening. Yes. So that's beautiful. Another question I have for you about the EFT technique, which I have interviewed some people about it, but I think I didn't ask them, when do we know who needs really, how do we know that we are in need of this technique? Do you treat specific people with specific issues or it's open? Uh, I mainly predominantly help people with their emotions around anxiety and depression, Um, but it is open to everything. Like I said before, this is a technique if in the moment you all of a sudden have a sore leg or you can't sleep or you're stressed from work or your kids, like I said, maybe driving you nuts or maybe (laughs) your partner is. Um, Literally, yeah, you can can tap on anything because it's about whatever you're feeling in your body Mm. um, and the emotions that are coming up. It is, as it says, emotional. So you can tap on all those things. So I use it for everything. And I tell my clients that like when you walk away from here, whatever's coming up, just tap. (laughs) Yeah. So because the body's constantly doing that anyway, like storing everything, right, Megan? If we are, I mean, life is just this uh, a very, it can become a stressful territory, this reality. So we are in constant need of healing for sure at the level of the body for sure and emotional. Thank you so much for what you do, for being open for being this agent to change, transformation and healing. Thank you, Megan. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And before we say goodbye, I do have a few more questions for you. Let me see. I'll ask three of them. What is another word for healing? Releasing. Yeah, because uh, healing can have, you know, I think in your community it won't, but healing in um, the wider community community can have a bit of a uh, negative stigma. You know, there's certain words that you're not supposed to use as a holistic practitioner, and that's probably cure and healing, that you heal someone. So uh, I like to say releasing, which in, in to be honest, for me, I feel like it is interconnected with those words anyway. If you knew you would die soon, meaning leave in the body, would you make any change or do anything in a different way? That's a great question. I think if I had asked this question or answered this question a few years ago, I would have said yes. Yeah. But now, no, I feel like I'm living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that, how the body releases that laugh in, in yeah. celebration, right? Or oh, uh, that's the statement Absolutely. of that. Yes. I love yes. that answer. It's a joy. <laughs> I love that answer. And my last question is, what are three things about life you know for sure as of this moment? Oh, that you can still be connected to people that are not on the same wavelength as you. 
so you don't have to change who you are. That love, well, it's a bit of a cliche, love trumps all. And I, I believe that because it's also about loving yourself. And when you love yourself more, then you can love others more. Uh, and lastly, don't wait to do what you want to do. Don't wait to do that course or don't wait to, you know, explore your, you know, if you if you want to go into the healing or spiritual nature, like find ways that you can do those things even if it means, you know, for instance, working part-time and doing things on the side, just don't wait because what are you waiting for? Thank you so much, Megan, again, for your presence, your wisdom. I love your wisdom and this sincere desire to help others. It comes through. I can hear in your voice and your laughter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? Yeah, so on my website, www.mindfulhealingtoolkit.com.au. Wonderful. I'll have that link also on your podcast profile. Thank you so much again, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye for now, Megan. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Megan Goods and her work, please visit mindfulhealingtoolkit.com.au. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.